Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh to some of y'all. Peace out to the rest of you. Yeah, tell me about it. Hit the share button because the message is more important than the message. So here's the deal, y'all. Um, there's an African proverb, and it's in the title. Um, and I like African proverbs a lot because, one, there's so many of them, and a lot of them seem to exist in more than one language um, anyway. Uh and then, additionally, because um, every time I try to find out exactly which language one comes from, I find just a region. And so it, it appears that leads me to think that um, since you've got 2,000 languages in that continent alone, you uh, probably are going to have the same proverbs in multiple languages, especially in the West, where people easily learn multiple languages. Or I should say in Bantu areas, uh, because many people of... Bantu extraction particularly learns several languages. Um, so anyway, that being said, um, the one you see in the title, the speaker of truth has no friends, comes in multiple. Um, it, it comes in more than one version. There's some that say the speaker of truth will be driven out of every village. <laughs> Pretty much it means that the truth isolates you. From other people and I want to say this to YouTube content creators and to commentators if you begin to tell the truth you're going to face some uh, something that you don't want to because it happens to everyone it happened to me but mostly in the States it happens a lot less here many of you that are teachers in the United States or in the UK um, know about what I'm speaking because you've been in similar situations in which um, as teachers, you're not allowed to tell your administrators that the students are the ones who continuously refuse to perform and that it is not you being a bad instructor. It is that the students just are too cool for school. They have that anti-intellectualism, don't they? Nod your head. Yes, you know, they do. And if you tell your administrator about that, he's going to trip. He's going to say or she's going to say that you're just making um, uh, making it up because you don't want to do your job and you know you're the one that's held accountable because they'll tell you if your students fail if enough of your students fail or if the average performance of your students goes below a particular minimum or floor then uh, we don't bring you back in and you don't we don't renew your contract that's what they do I know because I've been there and there are times when you're not allowed to tell the parents the truth about what their kid is doing and that's exactly what happens. I remember a situation in which I uh, had a really bad student um, for testing. And we had to start on a Monday and test all the way until Thursday. And it was for a state test. And so um, he started talking as soon as I began to give the instructions on the very first minutes of the very first day. And I said to him, uh, uh, Dominic, why are you talking while I'm explaining the test to the class? Because I can. He was in seventh grade, so we had that Mickey Mouse voice, but he was really bad. And I said, well, I can see your address, and I already looked. And I can wait outside your house one morning, unless, of course, you shut up and let me explain this to the students. The instructions will help you, too. It might make the test easier. Pay attention. And I went on, and he actually didn't... Uh, he didn't continue on. He was not supposed to be in my classroom. He was actually expelled for throwing something at me and missing. And I remember um, Tuesday, Monday night and Tuesday, mostly Tuesday night, I, I supplicated. And as a matter of fact, I supplicated when I went to sleep and then I supplicated in the morning and I said, uh, during the prayers, I, I said, Lord, Put the fear of you and me into his heart. Protect me not only from oppressing anybody, but from being oppressed by him or anyone else. Protect all of us in the classroom from being oppressed by this guy. He did not show up Wednesday or Thursday. He showed up on Friday in a state of confusion saying that I instructed him not to show up and I said to uh, when I was asked did I say this to him I said to them the students know that I never told any student not to come not Wednesday and Thursday 
I told them that they would go to their normal classes Friday because the testing was over. That's the only thing I said to them. Okay, all right then. So what he said is false. And I said, yeah, it is. I never had that conversation with him. And so one of them said, okay, well, who did you have that conversation with? And I said to him, well, between you and me, I had that conversation with God. But it wasn't about him not coming. The thing was, he can't decide to behave himself. So I got lucky. When I say lucky, I mean I was, I was blessed. He looked out for me. Look at the state of confusion that this kid is in. He doesn't seem fully sane, fully mentally present. After all, he wasn't supposed to come to this campus. He was supposed to go to the campus for the expelled students. He's here. Now, I was lucky. But for telling the truth about how the students did so poorly on those state tests, they wouldn't study. It was their attitude. It was them. Their parents weren't even lackadaisical as parents for the most part. They were busy parents, but not lackadaisical hands-off parents. That wasn't it. It was a culture. I never got called back. I'm not the only one to go through that. Many of you have been, dealt with something like this. Look at the stores that the Habibs own in the hood and the gas stations that they own, period, anywhere. You know that if you show up and you uh, uh, find that they don't have any alcohol, any pork, any pornography for sale, or cigarettes, these are things that we as Muslims are not allowed to sell unless maybe you believe in a particular fic that is very militant, a very, if you believe in a particular jurisprudence that is quite militant against those who have a fight against us, maybe you might believe that it's okay. And even then, it's, it's debatable, but what I'm saying is that for the most part, the average Muslim understands we are not to sell these things. You go into their stores and you see them selling this and they're Muslim, that means they failed the test or they believe in that jurisprudence that I mentioned. But it also means this, you know, see, let's be honest. What is the reason that the, the speaker of truth has no friends? It's the masses, it's the majority. That's us, the masses, the majority. How do we react when people tell us the truth? We generally don't like it. Sometimes we really don't know and don't believe it, but we generally, uh, I wouldn't even say we generally don't like it. Truth does not always have to be painful. People like to, we especially love to say the truth hurts. The truth does not always have to hurt. We tend to think it does. That's why we know about Kyle Rittenhouse and we don't know uh, about Andrew Coffey. The fourth. Because we're used to thinking truth has to hurt. And because of that, if we were to um, look at the situations in which it doesn't hurt, what would happen to us? We wouldn't believe what we were hearing and what we were saying. So we form that, that majority that reacts negatively to the truth. We are the market that forces Mr. and Mrs. Habib to sell things that we as a religious group believe are forbidden to traffic in buying or selling for us. You see, we are a majority of people who would rather be drunk than going places and that's why we don't go to gas stations if they don't have some cigarettes and some alcohol and some pork and some pornography to sell along with the gas. Because we'd rather be, as I said, indulging in vices than going places. And we are the ones, we are the reason that the speakers of truth get driven out from every village. According to the proverb, we are the village driving them out. So I'm gonna say this to the masses. One, we need to be more truthful. And that means we need to be ready to face uh, negative financial consequences and lifestyle consequences and changes for telling the truth and for being honest. That's a part of it. And also, we need to stop being that village that drives people out when they tell the truth. Unless, of course, they're gonna tell the truth for the wrong reason. That's, now, that's another story, and I've gone into, I've talked about that before. I've 
discussed how the Bedu here love to say three statements that are um, that are true, but they say them for the wrong, for the false reasons. I've talked about that before. But in this case, what I'm talking about is something else. Just how we react to the truth. And if you're a content creator, you need to know that if you tell certain truths, hell, there are times where if you don't tell certain lies, you will not get the same amount of money. And if you're going to be a content creator, whether you're going to monetize your channel or not, you need to be ready to face that. Now, it's easier if you don't monetize it. Should you not? I wouldn't say so. I choose not to. I did try, failed. I wasn't going to go the extra mile. But if you choose to monetize it, you must still be ready to face a loss of income and living standard and comfort somewhere down the line because you chose to tell the truth. And you need to be ready for this on YouTube and off YouTube. You need to just be ready for it. Think of it as a test. I went through it in the States. I don't go through it that much now, but I could. But everybody's gonna go through it at some point. Until the day that we collectively decide to stop being that village that drives out the honest people, everyone individually must go ahead. Everyone individually needs to be prepared to be the truth teller that gets driven out of the village. But it's also time for truth tellers to form their own villages in which we drive out the liars. This goes for those of you who start beefs that you don't even legitimately, honestly have from yourself to drive up views and sales and sensationalism. That's who I'm talking to. Thanks for listening. Black heart, black mind, black out. Asalaamu Alaikum.